We now have our entire 3D printer frame assembled and we're almost ready to install the belts. But before we do that, we have to pay just a little bit of attention to these little carriage pieces that connect to the belt and also to the diagonal arm. We need three different kinds of bolt lengths uh, in order to connect this. The bottom two bolts that connect this to the bearing block are the normal 8mm long M3s uh, that you've seen throughout the rest of the frame. Uh, the top two there are 15mm long as the plastic is thicker up there. And then the two coming in from the sides are 20mm long and they're also M3. In addition to that, buried back in both sides there behind these little pieces uh, are spots for two lock wash or lock nuts. Uh, these lock nuts go in there and in there and connect to the 20 millimeter um, Allen bolt to hold on the vertical arms, uh, one on this side and one on that side. Once you've finished with assembling it, what you end up with is something that looks very much like that. Uh, and then at that point, we're ready to install it on the actual frame of the printer on the bearing block. And when you've done that, it ends up looking like that. Uh, we're going to do that with all three of these arms and get them set up. And at that point, we're ready to go ahead and get the Air Tripper Bowden extruder assembled and start assembling the actual print effector. It's worth noting here that the diagonal arms are connected between here and here, the effector, uh, using lock nuts. The lock nuts go in here and here and here uh, and there and there. Um, there are hexagonal cutouts for them that w are fairly easy to strip out. You can't really rely on them to hold that lock nut still. So if you can hold uh, a little flathead screwdriver and place a little bit of pressure against one of the flats of the nut, uh, and that's true for both these pieces and these pieces, while you're spinning from the outside there and, and hooking these on, um, It'll go a lot smoother uh, if you feel it pop, 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 pop when you're when you're spinning on that with the Allen wrench and you're not placing any pressure on that nut. Uh, what's happening is that lock nut is just spinning back there. Okay, we have all three of our little uh, sliders and diagonal arms attached there to our 3D printer, and it's actually starting to look like a printer now, which is nice. And there's one more thing we need to do before we can attach the belt, and that is up here. Um, Right here on this end stop, we need to go ahead and attach the switches on all three of these arms uh, to stop the rail when it comes up. And the reason we're doing that now is because the belt's going to sit in front of that after the belt is installed, so it's an access issue. If you put these in now, it'll be a lot easier. Okay, I'm putting the end stop switches on now, and I've hit a slight snag where uh, these solder points on the back are interfering with it sitting flush against this, so I'm having to file on this, right on this end a little bit, just a little bit off of there to make space for those solder points so that the end stop switch will hit flat. You do want to make sure that your, your end stop switches sit flat and flush against this and that and they connect at the same point uh, every single time they're actuated, that they don't move around at all or it will mess with your adjustment later on. You can see now that we've got all three of our end stop switches installed at the tops of the rails. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and get ready to install the belts. Uh, you're going to want to check first that the end space here uh, where this protrudes out is equal for all three uh, tops and adjust this screw if necessary to get this as level as possible. That'll ensure that all three belts start off at the same length. Looking at the sliding rail here, you can see how the GT2 belt hooks in. It comes down here, wraps around this, and then hooks in here. You can see it's got little teeth in the plastic to grab the belt. I've seen some people glue that in and cut that off flush. Other people don't glue it and will put a little zip tie there. I'm not really sure which way I'm going to go with it yet. I'll probably start off with the zip tie and see how well that works. Once the belt's been connected to the top end of the slide, you can go ahead and feed it through and around the top pulley and then back down towards the motor. Now that our belt's fed through the top pulley, we're going to follow it down and around that bottom pulley of the motor and then come back up and connect to the bottom half of this sliding connector in the same fashion that we hooked up the top. Once the belt's hooked in on both the top and bottom of the sliding rail, you'll be able to slide it up and down and the stepper motor should rotate. 
you have to take at this point all of this excess and trim it off, though you'll want to leave about 30 to 40 millimeters um, and zip tie it to the bottom there for future adjustments. Now that we've got all of the belts installed and tensioned and all the diagonal arms are ready to go, we can work on the effector a little bit. This is the effector. You can see here that it has a similar thing going on to, to the slide arms where each of the ball joints is going to be hooked in there with a lock nut. All the lock nuts go in there on the other side will be the ball joint from these uh, diagonal arms there and there will be six of those that hook in. Uh, in addition, the hot end will connect to that. Uh, below that, the fan shroud will go around it um, and then up here we're going to be threading this hole in the center uh, for five millimeters so that it can take the brass fitting that holds the PTFE tubing. So that's what our five millimeter tap that I mentioned in the first video is for. Uh, once we get all of that done, we can actually hook in this effector to all six of these arms and, uh, and at that point we'll be ready to go ahead and work on the, the air tripper bowden extruder. Okay, we've now attached all six arms, and you can see how this is going to work now uh, as this moves this way, or this moves that way, or that moves that way. So we've got our A, B, and C axes all working uh, to move this around, which is exactly what we want. The effector is completely installed. Our threading uh, worked out. We've got our little press fit adapter installed there. Um, down below here will go the hot end and the fan mount. Um, but the next step is actually going to be building our air tripper Bowden extruder.